So I was telling some people today that I would do only five minutes because I really want to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> No, I had a I had a Ray last year when it first started. He was saying, "Hey, Pastor," I went, "No, mm -mm. don't call me that, please don't." <laughs> and then I was talking to uh, Jeremy once. I told him, you know, Ray was joking about me, and I'm like, "Yeah, uh, not a pastor, but I would say I'm a pastor in training." And, uh, well, I'll be speaking on how um, being unashamed of the gospel. My, uh, the main verse that I'm going to be using would be Romans 1.16. For, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also the Greeks. Now, to live an unashamed life of the gospel means we proclaim it, but it also means we apply it to our lives and show we believe it. Amen. There's two different words for it, unashamed and ashamed. Now I had, I put these, I looked on Google for these because I wasn't going to remember them. I'm just saying, but ashamed is embarrassed or guilty because of one's action characteristics or characteristics. Now unashamed means express or acting openly and without guilt or embarrassment. But uh, I was thinking in my head once that uh, so many teens, you know, they'll in high school they have peer, bad peer pressure. People, because they're either a Christian and then yet their friends or somebody will make fun of them saying that about God and everything. And they just hide it inside them and they're being uh, ashamed of what they are. Which we need to be unashamed by spreading the word. Now in uh, the book of Romans, the first chapter, Paul was uh, writing his credentials to Roman Jews and Gentiles. And he was longing to go towards Rome and he wrote this the first chapter one he wrote I would cause my release time leader wasn't be able to come here he was on a, a trip or something and he taught the first five chapters and released on foot with us and actually I use this verse because this is one of my favorite verses Romans 1 16 on this and this is why I'm using this one to be unashamed of the gospel but we'll get into the main thing so Romans 10 11 for the scriptures say everyone who believes in him will be will not be put to shame. Now Mark sixteen, fifteen, and he said to them, Go into the world go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. That's us being unashamed of the gospel, spreading it, not being ashamed, holding it in and hmm. <laughs> but not being ashamed of what we are basically now uh, Acts 9 Acts chapter 9 verse 3 through 6 now as he went on his way he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone, shone around him and falling to the ground he heard a voice saying, saying to him Saul, Saul why are you persecuting me and he said who are you Lord and he said I am Jesus whom whom you are persecuting, but rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are, what you are to do. Now, I had to look on stuff to find these scriptures, different things. I was looking on Google, looking up different verses for being unashamed of the gospel. And really, I had this Bible app on here that I put unashamed, you know, I had one, and then ashamed had a whole bunch of scriptures down a list, and I took, found some of them that I thought would be good for me to use. And really, I have different... I don't have a lot of examples, I only have like two of being ashamed. Now, uh, it was the Jonah and the whale. You know, he didn't want to go to the, what was that city? I don't, yeah, he didn't want to go to Nineveh because the people were murderers and everything, and he didn't want to go there so because he thought he was going to be killed. He thought they were going to kill him. And that's, I want to say that was basically being ashamed. He was just, I'm like, no. He didn't want to be killed and everything, but he was being ashamed of what he is because he thought that they would be persecuted. So then he flew, got on a ship, and then you had basically, you know, the story of what happened there. And he finally became, you know, and told them everything. So now, and I saw on Acts chapter 9 how he was saying, how Jesus was saying, why are you persecuting me? Saul at the time was Paul, before he actually became it, he was actually Saul. 
if I'm not mistaken on this, but uh, <laughs> and Saul was uh, murdering Christians, and uh, what was it again? I was <laughs> yeah, throwing him in jail and everything, and this is before he actually became a Christian at all. So he was being, he wasn't, he didn't know Christ, but he was, basically, I guess you could say he was being ashamed of the other ones, saying that you can't do this, can't do that, talking to the Christians and everything, and then suddenly the light appeared and telling Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then he finally became this, and now Paul is his name. But in, Ch in Romans, the, he went by, by the Persinicus credentials, he went by the Apostle Paul, because and this is what I've learned and released on that Paul was a common name back then. So, and while he was writing this, the Romans were the Roman Jews and Gentiles were just able to come back into Rome because they got kicked out of it because of who they are and everything. And he was writing because because he was a his mission was to spread the gospel and actually just spread the word. But while he was writing this, he was longing towards go go to Rome. And he was presenting his credentials in chapter 1. Then there's a whole bunch of ones. And Jeremy was telling me, he's like, what are you gonna, what's your main verse? He's like, actually, no. He's like, what are you going to be learning, teaching on? I'm like, you'll find out. I never told anyone. I've only told a few. And he's like, okay, here, just tell me your main verse. And I'm like, well, it's in the book of Romans. He's like, I love Romans. In the book of Romans. I'm like, it's my favorite too. And I was actually trying to make a joke, trying to tell him to guess around. I was said, because I learned in release time, the first five chapters, because we taught it, and we went for about an hour, is about how we had it for in class, and we went through one chapter. We're, we went through about a chapter for about a month, just redoing it. And it was awesome, what we did on it. So, uh, which one did I leave off now? I think I already finished that one. So it would be... Okay, so now, yeah, I'm on first... Okay, First Peter 4, 16. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. Okay. Now, uh, Genesis 2, 25. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This was talking about Adam and Eve in the garden when because they, they never had clothes until they ate after the, ate of the uh, ate, yeah, they ate out of the tree, which the serpent, which was Satan, told them to. And then yeah, Jesus, God didn't want them to. But uh, after that happened, they sinned and then they noticed that they were naked and they hid behind bushes because they and then I don't remember the whole story about it but they were actually became ashamed of what they did and they just said uh, then now uh, Second Chronicles 7 14 if my people who are called by, by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will fear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land that's being unashamed of the gospel. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, that's talking about the ashamed there. Like, one thing you can do, one, I forgot to say before I started this too. Like, most teens, you know, they'll say one thing and they'll do the other. Most of us here used to do that. We'll come to church, and now, by the least time, leader told his testimony to me. Actually, the whole entire class. He was saying that while he was about in his teenage years to mid, you know, 20s, he used to go to church. He asked, like, this big Christian. He'll go and be, like, knew all the verses and everything. Then he'll go and do the wrong thing with his friends, you know, because of peer pressure and different stuff. And he actually, what he told me once, he lost a friend in a car crash, but he kept... My release on my year's name is uh, Justin. Well, his last name is Bar Barthelmas, but we call him Coach Bart sometimes because he's the coach of the football team at the middle school that I go to, that I used to go to. But uh, during this, he was saying that he lost his friend in a car wreck, but he kept his, you know, relationship with God to himself. He didn't want to share it to anyone else. And that's how some of us are at first. We didn't want to bring it to, 
to them because some of us are either ashamed or we just want to keep their relationship. We don't want to give it to anyone else because we think it's just ours. Than it is anyone else's. But he lost a friend, and he not knowing either. He got he could, and he has to live with that now, which is hard. Now, nor okay. So now let's go to. Do not be deceived, neither the the sexually immoral nor. What does it say up there? <laughs> yeah. What's the word after Nora? I do. Okay, I die. I die uh, Adulterers, nor adulterers. <laughs> we'll go next. Okay, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revivalers. I needed it. I should have read this before I did this. Nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, most of y'all know I always do go upstairs and do the uh, computer and everything. And I was joking with, uh, I was telling my parents and then I was telling Ray, I'm like, you know, I should just be upstairs, just walk up there and just preach from there. And then Jeremy saw me and he was saying, it's going to be a word from heaven, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like, pretty much. I don't like no one doing the computer except me. <laughs> Thanks for doing it, Brian. Because <laughs> I'll tell you one little story about how I got to do it. So, many of you don't know that John's mom passed away. Diane, I don't think Diane was about going to make it to the funeral to do the computer. So, Wendy asked me Sunday morning if I could do it for, for, the, for the thing. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So, I did the little screen, showed pictures of her and everything. And I started doing that. And then, Dad came up there a little bit later. He's like, hey... You want to know a crash course of how to do this so you can do it Sunday night? I'm like, okay. <laughs> I got nothing else to do, so I mean, better yet, just sit there and uh, sit in there. <laughs> so I started just doing that. I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> it's fine. And then uh, I think it was last week, Dad uh, had to go sing somewhere. And uh, I'm just up there right after they left. Dana looked at me and she's like, play some music, please. I'm like, okay. So I was a, so before, this is before we came here. There was an old church we used to go to was the Liberty Liberty Ministries, and I was about I was maybe six or seven. I always my uncle did the sound was in the sound room always controlling the sound, and I always stay up there used to. That's before I wasn't allowed to go up there anymore. I didn't do anything. They just didn't want people to go up there. <laughs> so I used to I used to watch him how he did it. You know I kind of know a little bit of it. And uh, I had to play around with some CDs on it. And uh, there was this uh, black Christian choir, I guess you would say, that Miss, me and Miss Dan would listen to it. We only played one song. It was just a live version, and the live versions ain't that good to me. Of when I'm like, I paused it, and I'm like, I got to do something else. And then right when I paused it, Miss Dan is like, could you play something else? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> So this two, that was this five. So this two and this three, I didn't know at the time was an instrumentals. So I'm looking at them, and they look both the same. And I'm looking at them. I'm like, Phew. what do I do? <laughs> so then yeah, she's like, play or this two or something. I think that's instrumentals. I'm like, okay. So I started playing that. But thankfully, actually helping out with my uncle paid off. They're messing with it. So I might, I will. Uh, during prayer, I'll put some music on or something, and I'll turn it up the volume a little bit. I have to, thankfully, there are tape. There's like tape right under the things that says which one is which. I went, like, okay. And the computer one, for the volume of that, I was trying to play something because uh, Dad wanted me to play something once, and it didn't work because the thing was off. I didn't know it, so I had to run downstairs, go to Wendy's office while she was putting the uh, word from... <laughs> I think I don't remember who was preaching from the night, but she put that trying to put that on the computer, and she's like, "There's a button you gotta press to turn it on." I'm like, "Okay." I run back upstairs and I turn it on. So I, I'm learning some stuff still up there. <laughs> what was it? All right. Which one was it? Number ten. Okay, so now Second Timothy, three. Or chapter 3, verse 5. Having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. 
that's us. Like, basically, that's staying, like, you know, we have some of us, well, I have a few friends that aren't really, I would say they're kind of really Christians, but most of, most of them don't want to actually show their godliness about it. They'll hide it, and they'll either cuss or do different things, and now, in my thing, I feel like I want to help them, so I don't want to leave them, and Justin was talking about this, me and him, during a, uh, I think it was your first or second uh, teaching you did up there on Wednesday night. We were saying something. You were saying, don't hang around. You guys stay away from those friends and find new ones that are Christians. And yet me and him were talking. I'm just like, well, what if you think if uh, to stay, you can help, even though you might be the only one there to help them. And that's what I have in my mind always. I could help them. And, you know, but that, then Justin was saying, but sometimes I can be the other way around. They can bring you down. But you have to be strong in that. But it's saying here in 2 Timothy 3, 5, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power of which there's people. That's mainly uh, most of the scriptures that I have on here, and I don't even think I went long. And I... <laughs> but uh, my first... Uh, my first one I talked about on how we, how we can use our gifts for the glorification of God. And I could help you on yours when after we finish uh, <laughs> finish, <laughs> finish John. Because <laughs> we, we were sitting at the table and he's talking and he's like, I don't know how long we're going to be on John. And, uh, but after we do that, we're going to be doing how we can use our gifts. And all. I'm like, huh, I did this last year. And uh, so I'm like, yeah, I could give him some of my scriptures, just only if I have it on my tablet still, on it. But <laughs> and uh, I want to say thanks to Hunter coming here, cause uh, and Troy. I was trying to get Hunter to come to the men's breakfast we had. Uh, was it last month? But it was the week. It was the weekend of Father's Day, so he spent spent time with his uh, family and went camping and all. And he said, I told him, and then I'm like. Hmm. I really want to see this guy because I haven't seen him in a long time. So how am I going to? I'm like, that's right. I'm preaching. I should get him to come. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, he, uh, I'm glad that he just came because I really, really have missed him, and I'm glad that he could be here. And then I had people tell me, when are you going to be preaching? I'm like, I don't know. But my first one that I was actually going to do tonight was on. Uh, I thought it would be better to do it sometime near Valentine's Day because it has dealing with love. And then Ernie was telling me, once I was like, no, nah, you should do it about when you're going to do it. I might. Like, Maybe another time because God spoke to me on doing, being understanding of the gospel. And it really touched me. I'm like, hmm, I can finally use my favorite verse now on this one. So I guess I'm just going to end with... Uh, Hey, Ray, how long did I do? <laughs> he was, um, uh, he, yeah, he was joking with, uh, yeah, I'm not long-winded. <laughs> he was joking with me last year. He was, last year when I first started, he was like, you gotta go longer than 10 minutes. I'm like, I'm like, thank God we had food. <laughs> But it's not on YouTube, the one that I did last year, because it was uh, the way we recorded it had singing, me in the middle preaching, and then singing at the end. And Wendy didn't know how to like get him apart, so I'm not on there, my first one. So this is my first one on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> now there's a few people that didn't get to come, but they said, oh, I'll watch it on Facebook, and I'm like, okay. At least you're watching it. <laughs> you're doing good. Yeah. But I'm all, but I'll end it here, I guess. For okay, Romans 1:16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first, and also the Greeks, and also to the Greek. Amen. 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 Well, that's it. Amen. For now. <laughs> Y'all stand up, you gotta pray. It's awesome. It's awesome. Y'all, it's wonderful. I mean, the young men like.
like this will get to the church, knowing it's going to be live streaming, knowing it's going to be on YouTube, and preach a message. It's not ashamed of the gospel. We need more young men in our churches in our schools today that are not ashamed of the gospel. And Micah, that was awesome. I enjoyed that. That's a real good message. That's a powerful.